Hey, happy campers. Todd here, Great American RV Superstores. Today, we're gonna go over the operation of your Norcold refrigerator in your RV. So your Norcold refrigerator may not look exactly like this, it may be bigger, may be smaller, and your mode, button, power button, all that stuff, you might have a LED display instead. That's okay, the standard operation is the same. So you'll have a power button, a mode button, and a temperature button. Power button obviously turns this off and on. Here we have an indicator light. It would either be green or red. The green is good, red is bad. And our mode button and our temperature button. If you have an LED, LED display, then instead of having a LED light, it would go ahead and flash a code for you in the event that something went wrong. So let's talk about our other buttons here. Our mode button gives you three options, an auto, an electric, or propane. Our auto is gives you the option of automatically swapping from electric to propane. And that option is more or less your standard operation. It's what most people keep it on. It is going to dominantly use electric if you're running your generator or you're uh, plugged into shore power. If we go into our electric side, then it will kick in only when you're plugged into electric. If you were to lose power or unplug your unit, that propane is not going to kick in. This unit will shut down and it will stop cooling. If we go into propane, exact opposite. It's gonna work off of propane. If you run out of propane, then it's not gonna kick into electric and it's not gonna cool. Uh, our temperature buttons, one, two, three, four, five. One is the lowest, five is the highest. Pretty self-explanatory there. So let's ask the question, how do we know it's working besides the fact that it's cooling? It's gonna take 12 to 24 hours for it to cool, but when you initiate the system, like I said, you should have a green light here, no matter what mode you're in, should have a green light. If it doesn't kick in on electric or it doesn't kick in on propane, it's gonna show a red light, or like I said, if you have that LED display, it's gonna flash a code. If it's electric, what do we look for? Well, let's make sure our breakers are on, or either our generator or our power pole or inside of our unit itself. Uh, and if it's in propane and it's not working, what do we look at? Well, make sure that our propane is, is filled, make sure our propane valve is on. And another tip that I'll give you is in the event that it isn't lighting and you're sure all these things are on, go over and bleed your stove out and make sure you don't have any air in the line. If you stored your unit with your propane off, which normal people do, then you're gonna have some air in your system and the only way to bleed it out quickly is to go over to your stove. It will automatically try to light a certain number of times, but then it's gonna shut off, give you that air. After you bled the air out of your stove, you can either go to the mode button again and start cycle through or shut the whole system down, turn it back on and it should try to ignite again. We'll step outside and take a better look at that system. So outside directly behind your refrigerator, you'll find a vent with two turn tabs, you'll turn and twist those and pull your vent off. And here we will see our 110 plug, our controller. We have our 12 volts coming in, a gas line for our propane, our gas valve, and a flue tube where it heats up from the propane. We also have two heating elements in there. And this right here is your cooling unit. So uh, I'll tell you before you stick your hand in here, this is hot, this is hot, a bunch of this stuff is hot, and we also have power in here, so be careful whenever you're stepping into this area. Uh, so operation, our 110, if our receptacle is live, it will send power through this board and tell it to initiate the heating elements. If we're ever concerned that our 110 isn't working, easy fix is you pull that 110 plug out, stick a phone charger or something in there, and you can uh, confirm that that 110 outlet does have power. For our propane power, if our electric isn't operating, it will automatically kick over. It will send a signal on this wire right here to our igniter. It'll open up our gas valve. And if you kind of look through some of the little holes that we have right here, you might see the flame actually burning. Uh, and once again, you, that area will be hot. And that's a good way to know that it is operating. Once again, our green light on the inside will indicate that it is. In the event that we have a red light, if we step outside, we wanna make sure that we hear this clicking noise here. So if we hear that clicking noise and it still doesn't operate, go in, bleed your stove, make sure you don't have air in your lines, 
start your system over and come check it again and make sure that it's igniting. If we don't hear our igniting noise on the propane and we're sure we've cycled the system over, you want to go ahead and bring it into a shop so we can check things out. Also, if electrical, if you checked all your breakers and you still don't have power here at the receptacle, bring the unit in, let us check it out so we can figure out what's going on for you. So we've been to the back outside. We know what to better investigate in the event things went wrong. Most people, hey, if you see a green light, you're good to go. Let's talk about a couple tips here. This is an absorption unit, so there's no compressor to actually cool it. So it absorbs the heat and cools your unit. So it's a good idea to have all your things that you want to put in here cooled off before you put them in. And when you put them in, leave about a one inch gap behind the uh, between the back wall and your items to allow air to flow through the back. Otherwise, these fins right here will frost up. Last tip I will give you is whenever you are done camping before you store your your unit you want to make sure to leave a little gap right here on that on that refrigerator door allow the moisture and everything to dry out once you've turned your fridge off of course also allow this freezer to drain uh, to defrost excuse me there's no drain hose back here for that water to leak out of uh, and so if you leave that water in there, what's going to happen is it's going to leak out of this gasket on the door and it's going to damage our wood down beneath and that's not a covered item. So do that. Once again, leave that door open as well. Let all that moisture dry up so you don't have a moldy, mildy fridge whenever you're ready to go out camping again. We hope you enjoyed our video and you learned something. If you need more information on how to bleed the air out of your propane system, don't worry, we got you covered with another video in our helpful hacks section of our YouTube channel. Click like, subscribe, share on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you found us, and make sure that you're passing on this information to all your camping buddies. We're here to help you and tune in for the next helpful hack here at Great American RV Superstores where we bring the how-to to you.